there are about 100 million people in the Philippines. More than a third are under the age of 15. Economists say this could be an advantage because the country is experiencing an economic boom. But to realize the Filipino youth's full potential, the government must address public education issues. And there are plenty of them, from lack of classrooms to the lack of qualified teachers. In some of the most far-flung areas, there isn't even a school to go to. We travel to the southern Philippines, to the mountain village of Dagum in Zamboanga del Sur. There, we saw just how difficult it is for some kids to get to school. It's only six in the morning, but nine-year-old Jessa, her brother Julex, and their little sister Jelsa are ready to go to school. Never mind that they haven't had breakfast or that they've got nothing packed for lunch. Class doesn't start till nine, but these kids don't have a minute to waste. So the kids are off to school right now and they said it's going to take about an hour to get to school. But we actually took the same path coming here and it took us more than a couple of hours to get here. So I know this is going to be one hell of a trek. <laughs> this is actually really hard. And um, you know, to give you a fairly good picture of just how far this place is from the city where there is an airport, it took us about a day of land travel and foot travel to get to this place. So. This is really one hell of an adventure. Uh. From the river, Jessa, Julex, and Jelsa will have to walk up and down this narrow path. Across some very rocky and muddy terrain. They need to cross another river before changing into their school uniforms. And then they walk some more. And while it's all become part of their daily routine, none of it, they say, has gotten easy. Jessa, Julex, Jelsa, and four other siblings come from a long line of Subanons, a local tribe that has long inhabited these mountains. Their parents, Romeo and Dolores, support the family by panning for gold along this river. Though the hours are long and the earning meager. Dagum Elementary is the only school in this mountain community. There are only three classrooms, two of which are divided between two levels. Janet Simafranca teaches both third and fourth grades in the same room at the same time. Kami nang gumagawa ng paraan kasi kasi nga kombi class kami three and four ako. So yung ginagawa namin, so halimbawa magpabasa kami dito, tapos dito kami mag-lecture sa kabilang grade. Kami na ang gumawa ng paraan para mabigyan namin sila ng tamang leksyon. In many ways, the problems here reflect the inadequacies in the Philippines' public education system. The lack of books, lack of classrooms, lack of teachers, and the deteriorating quality of education. 
Hindi mo talaga ma-force yung utak nila. Siguro dahil rin sa ano, gano'n naman talaga pag wala masyadong laman yung tiyan natin, siyempre hindi rin masyadong magpa-function yung utak. Yung mga bata dito, ano, yung minsan, hindi sila, nag, hindi sila pumapasok kasi pinapatulong sila sa mga mga magulang nila, paghahanap buhay. E ano mo na lang na naghahanap buhay sila, inuuna pa nila yung paghahanap buhay. Despite all this, Jessa, Julix, and Jelsa are determined to finish their studies, even if they have to do it in the dark of the night. There is no electricity in this village. With only a tiny speck of light, they read, write, and draw. It's clear, even in this darkness, and even at a very young age, they know education is their only way out of poverty. Ano gusto mo para sa mamili mo? Maraming pera? Maganda bahay? Oo. Uh -uh. Gusto mo, paglahay mo, makabili ka, sasakyan. Kotse. Oo. Uh -uh. Oo? Oh? Uh -huh. With little government aid, Jessa and her siblings will most likely need to continue making that long journey to school for some time to come. But in other remote areas in the Philippines, things are getting better. And it all started with social media. Hello. Deep in the mangroves of Zamwanga City in the southern Philippines is Layaglayag, a village built in the middle of the sea. Boats are the only mode of transportation, and until a couple of years ago, there wasn't enough to take all the kids here to school. That didn't stop them from going. So this is how these kids used to go to school. They swim uh, from this community where they live to the school inland, and it's about uh, two kilometers of seawater that they swim, so that's quite a distance. And if you can see, I'm sure you can see that the water level is up to my waist. And I was told that this water can get even higher. So as you can see now, the water level is already up to the shoulders of these kids. When the water gets even higher, then they really have to swim. They can't wade in these waters. <laughs> Kung pupunta na kami dito sa eskwela, wala na kami, hindi na, minsan hindi na kami makapunta dito kasi basaan lahat yung gamit namin. Tapos yung damit namin madumi na yung putik. Na, na, tapos yung paa namin nasusugatan na ng bato. But things started to change in 2010 when a status update on blogger J. Habaneta's Facebook page went viral. In a week's time, he and his friends were able to raise enough money to build one boat. Anton Lim, a native of Zamwanga City, was in charge of finding the community and the kids. When we gave him the boat, actually, what they were excited about was not really the boat, but the, the, what the boat symbolized. They said, you know, finally people are here, probably they will help us. Nobody knew they were there. So they thought they were forgotten. On our way back, so we sort of just looked at one another and said, what now? We gave them the boat already. And uh, then suddenly we said, no, we cannot stop at one boat. And so what began as one status message has grown into the Yellow Boat of Hope Foundation. Today, the over 300 school children in Layaglaya can carry their bags without having to worry about their things getting wet. Bakit bagong pag-asa yung pangalan ng ano? Pag-asa namin para makaawon sa mahirap na buhay. Our advocacy went from giving boats to increasing their the kids' access to education. Uh, we're now more holistic. We don't just uh, build boats. We build classrooms, schools. We have scholarships. We give school supplies. As Jay said, our country has seven, over 7,000 islands. So this story will not be strange to other islands too. There are now over 2,000 yellow boats sailing in more than 40 communities in the Philippines. But it will take more than these boats and volunteers to fill the gaps in the country's public education system.